It's nice to be in Miami. Really nice. When Kathy and I met, she wasn't looking for someone like me. By someone like me, I mean a passive underachiever with a subsistence level income. Not that I didn't have positive qualities back then. It's just that ambition and earning power weren't among them. We met more than two decades ago before algorithms and online dating sites told us whom to love. I could have used some online dating compatibility assistance in those days. I had been struggling in love. Love scared me, especially in its early phases where you had to risk rejection. I had neither the nerve nor the energy to put myself out there. Then Kathy came to town, to Tucson, Arizona, where I was in the graduate writing program. Though we were the same age, 27, Kathy had spent her post-college years ascending editorial mastheads in the New York magazine world and was looking to attend graduate school as a way to slow down so she could write. I, on the other hand, had grabbed my college degree a year later than she did, having been held back in kindergarten <laughs> And after graduating, headed west to Park City, Utah, where I found work as a ski instructor, winters only, and janitor, all seasons. For two years, I skied and I mopped. It was fun but skiing and mopping has its limits. So two years later, eager for a fresh challenge, I decided to head to Tucson to spend a few years learning how to write short stories. Many semesters later, with graduation looming and my future employment looking doubtful. I'd grown so lethargic that by the time Kathy came to town, I was having trouble coming up with reasons to leave my room, which is exactly why we met. True to her meticulous nature, Kathy researches all options before making any decision. So rather than rely on a phone call to get the inside scoop on Arizona's graduate writing program, she got her magazine to fly her across the country <coughs> on assignment so she could check it out firsthand. After meeting with the program director, and probing him for all he had to offer. She asked for the names and numbers of female students who might be willing to share their perspective with her over lunch. She asked specifically for female students because she wanted to hear about a woman's experience there. Since I'm not a woman, and wasn't then either, 
I don't know why the director added my name to the list of women he gave her. <laughs> Whatever the reason, Kathy and I were destined to meet because none of the women the director mentioned would have lunch with her. <laughs> they were all much too busy. Whereas when, where, whereas when my phone rang <laughs> on that fateful morning, I was sitting on my bed in a pre-coffee daze, watching my potted cactus grow. <laughs> Free lunch? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> An hour later, over sandwiches and drinks, Kathy, as the journalist she is, began peppering me with questions that were as much about me as the graduate program. Where are you from? What do you write? Do you have siblings, roommates? Still groggy, I struggled to respond to each one before she'd fire the next. What's your favorite novel? Um, I said. <laughs> what magazines do you read? A lot of them, I stammered. <laughs> Kathy's final request was to see some writing from the program. So after lunch, we strolled back to the English department. I grabbed a story of mine and handed it over. The next week, I received a letter from her. Yes, an actual posted letter from New York. This was 1989. <laughs> she thanked me for meeting with her and helping her out. She said she'd read my story in the bathtub and loved it. Later, she would tell me her bathtub reading experience was when she first began falling for me. And I would confess that imagining her in a bathtub <laughs> Enjoying my writing was when I first began falling for her. <laughs> Soon, via letters, we tried to figure out if we might be right. He applied to school in Tucson and was accepted. A few months later, I flew east to help her move. We made the trip in a Jeep we bought together. Well, I picked it out, she paid. <laughs> and began living in the same town. Eventually, we decided we were in love, the lifelong variety. Within 18 months of meeting, we were engaged. And less than a year after that, we married. She had to be the one to ask me, of course, <laughs> but I swear I was totally on the verge of asking her. <laughs> Not long ago, as research for a book I was writing, Kathy and I signed up for several online dating sites. Along with learning how online dating worked, I wanted to see if we might have found each other that way. To explain our single status, I said I was divorced. Kathy claimed to be widowed. <laughs> A little wishful thinking. Otherwise, we answered all questions truthfully. Unfortunately, none of the matches 
that soon filled our inboxes, included each other. No matter how many times I hit reload, or how far I scrolled, Kathy was never recommended for me, nor was I for her. Why? Evidently, she had put her sought-after income at a much higher level <laughs> than the modest amount I'd honestly confessed to making. So instead, she was directed to more compatible matches, like Leo, a divorced money market manager with an income three times what I earn. Is that why Kathy and I weren't recommended for each other? Because of our incompatibility over income? Yes, Leo was the guy for her. <laughs> the only problem was Kathy didn't think she liked Leo or any of the other Leos the sites kept feeding her. Improbable as it seemed, she liked me. Even though she still wasn't looking for someone like me, I was the one she wanted, then and now. So much for the power of number crunching when it comes to determining compatibility. In the end, Kathy was better off not setting her own parameters for love. She needed someone else to step in and add my name to her lunch list. <laughs> Luckily for me, someone did. Thank you.